This is Sessler Session with your host, Jared Sessler. Shining a spotlight on corruption, wokeness, and the insanity of the DC cesspool. Hey everybody, Jared here with the Sessler Session. Uh, we shot a great video with some great guests, Trevor and Logan, who are employees, past employees from PNNL. So we're going to go ahead and play that now. Shooting this opening because uh, part of our camera uh, recording got completely messed up. So we're going to cut into this and it might seem a little bit chunky at the start, but it'll get better as we go. So enjoy the show. Guys, uh, Trevor and Logan, thanks for joining me here today. So Trevor Ling and Logan Barnes, yep. right? That's correct. Uh, appreciate you guys being on the Sessler session here. Uh, I know, as I said in the opening, you guys have resigned from your company as a result of the vaccine mandates. And I assume that you did that under the pressure of getting fired. Like you basically, it was imminent that you were going to get fired or did you actually we've actually, we, we both got fired. Oh, okay. Terminated. So you actually got fired, so yep. you which is good. Cause I heard from a legal standpoint that people recommend not quitting, but actually forcing them to fire you and then documenting all that so that you can basically be ready for the massive class action lawsuit mm -hmm. that it's mm -hmm. gotta be coming. Yep. So uh, I've been talking about vaccine mandates for uh, sometime I've had the opportunity to interview some people on my show about this. this is a very important topic to me as I'm, I'm sure obviously it is to you guys as well but this is the first time that I've actually been able to interview some people that have actually been fired mm -hmm. and so thanks for coming on and uh, I know that that was a difficult decision certainly uh, to make even if it's obvious you know obvious decisions aren't always easy and so uh, my hats off to you for doing that. So for, my, for the viewers who are not in the area and don't know about uh, PNNL where you worked, tell me what that stands for, what the company does, and what each of you did. Uh, and Logan, we'll start with you okay. in the company. So PNNL is Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Um, it's a national laboratory uh, run by DOE. Um, Trevor and I were actually both technically electricians, um, but neither of us have uh, electrical certification outside of PNNL. Um, but most of our work was computer work, building conference rooms. Um, I worked on supercomputers. Um, and so that was, we were mainly support staff for maintenance and upkeep of. Okay. Yeah. You know, facilities like yep. CVs, CVs, <clears throat> CVs for the military. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so it's we were in the same group. He actually helped me get my job. Uh, <laughs> and so I worked there for six years. He worked a little bit longer than I did. And um, yeah, it's, it's been pretty cool. Yeah. A lot of hands on a lot of really cool stuff, a lot of really neat new technology. Yeah, but, yeah I would imagine. So they yeah. have a lot of government money flowing through oh, there. Yeah. And a lot, oh, yeah, of, do. a lot of communications need to happen mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So yeah. any shortage of work? from your guys' eyes no. from what needs to happen no. There. no no so there's a lot of work that's just not getting done right now yeah yeah mm -hmm. interesting yeah. yeah we were we were short staffed pre getting let go um yeah. and we're running uh lots of overtime and so that's what made the decision all the more confusing mm -hmm. that they just it didn't matter yeah it's an interesting situation because my take on PNNL from the outside looking in is this is not a group of, you know, low, you know, low education, low wage, low, you know, intelligence type people. Like pretty much everybody that works there is, you know, pretty, pretty savvy on, you know, whatever their job is, or they might have, you know, college degrees. Some people are pretty extreme. I mean, some of the work there's like science, scientific work they're doing, like on nuclear well, and that's, yeah, they, they that's actually right. had four different categories. Uh, they had national security, uh, or have national security, uh, environmental sciences, um, uh, like power grid field, and then they were actually doing some COVID work. Yeah, um, interesting. Yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that come up, or has come up in, in my research, I like to try to study this stuff as much as I can, 
you know, for these shows so that we can be concise and, and accurate. But my, my point with bringing that up is, is that I would view you and, the, and most of the other people at PNNL fairly high IQ sort of people. Like, we're, these are not dumb people, right? This isn't like low wage, you know. Yet, you know, we look at, and, I, and, and we'll show some graphics here, mm -hmm. but we, we, we were able to find some research where PNNL really seemed to puppet the mainstream narrative in regards to the virus yeah, yeah. And, and promote that within their, their employee base. So how many, about how many people are, are in the Richland area that are working for PNNL or sort of around PNNL? Pre-COVID, our numbers were about 4,500. Um, okay. And then because of COVID, the number of on-site dropped pretty dramatically. We were running about 30, 25 to 30% um, continuous was the stay behind. And then you have a few people that rotate in and out. Um, but yeah, 4,500 was about our, our, our normal running number. Okay. And that doesn't include anybody on the Hanford site other than the no, parts of no, that's just P and L. That's so just your your offices do sort of span across the border between Hanford and off of right. Right. Yeah. They do. Yeah. yeah. And you have to have extra security to get over to the side that's actually on the Hanford. Yeah. 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 You have to have a badge to actually get on the property on the Hanford site. The the P and L campus is open. Yeah. Um, to the public. And that and that's and that's partly because they. Is PNL and I mean, PNL is kind of a scientific engineering sort of a company, right? So, yeah. So what, what you're what you're seeing, why you're seeing the puppeting, in my opinion, um, uh, they get most of their funding from DOE. Okay. And over the years, um, anybody that's worked there can tell you that their stance on things shifts dramatically mm -hmm. depending on the policies and politics of DOE. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. And so when this administration's policies aligned more with the leadership of PNNL, and so they really charged ahead. Charged ahead yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I guess we see that in private companies. Mm -hmm. You know, we're experiencing that in our society. We're seeing that in state governance. Yeah. We're seeing that, obviously, federally. Very interesting. But what, when one of the things we pulled was, and I'm not sure who this gal is, but there's a gal named Amy Sims who hosted a, a uh, it looks like a training. This is a, this is a shot from a PNNL, looks like their website, where they're talking about bats and poly pangolins, pangolins mm -hmm. and, and humans. Oh my, that says a, a talk. This talk will explore the role of wild, wild animals play in the emergence of new disease. Uh, how, in, including how they spread, what symptoms they produce in humans, how their origins, blah blah blah. So clearly, they're they're puppeting this this narrative that uh, that this disease came from a wet lab, from bats, from you know this whole thing. Further, there's a there's a graphic that we came across here where, and this actually has the PNNL logo on it, where it says that. The virus is closest to viruses from bat colonies. There's genetic evidence indicating that it passed through another animal first. And third, there's no evidence that it was engineered or came from the Wuhan laboratory. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this is right there with, with, their, with their information. And, and so have you seen anything that would counter this knowing that, you know, recently over this last... You know, I guess it's been, you know, close to six months now since it was became very clear that this didn't come from, you know, the lab and didn't or didn't come from the the a random wet market. Animal, yeah. Yeah. yeah, or a random animal that you know, and, and even you know, our our King Falsey in in Washington D.C. says that oh well, there's a chance it could have come from a lab lab leak. Yeah. So ha has it, has there been any sort of retraction or have you had any talks at PNNL from somebody who talks about? the safety of labs and making sure lab leaks don't happen, or are they still inviting uh, Amy Sims to talk about her her connection? They are very um, heavy into um, the propaganda. Mm -hmm. They are very heavy into to maintaining their story. And right now, um, people like us are the main problem. People like us are the, are, the, are the ones they're actually making publications about. They've changed all of their um, 
training for like things that you can and can't participate in or else that's you know it's we're, we're going to label you as something else here uh they've never changed from that the, at the very beginning there was conflicting things between some of the people working in the groups there uh but then that quickly got silenced and then we then the lab became nothing but a puppet an additional mouth and that's kind of the problem is that like they are so invested in this mm -hmm. that at any cost, at all costs, they're going to continue to push it. And they, they take that stand, like you were mentioning, where we're scientists, we're following the science. That's all oh, we do. Yeah. We're, we're, we're researching here and we've only proven that. But then you bring up, well, we brought up several articles in our, in our process of being terminated, several articles, both the CDC, WHO, uh, NIH, NIH, all these articles about antibodies, things like that, that they just said, no, we're not going to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. And so how in the world can you say you're following the science if you're going to reject the reality of what's going on? Yeah. So that was a, a, a real big conundrum for us, real, real big puzzle for and us. And that's where the politics come in. Yeah. yeah. Because of the federal funding. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're over a billion dollar a year. And last year, uh, generally, and that they published this information, it's not a secret, um, they have been about $1.2 in the past. Um, and this last year, I believe they were at 1.4 or 1.6. Yeah. Um, so, it, yeah, yeah, there's two, two things with that, though. I mean, first of all, I feel like you could name this uh, killing the coffee talk. You know, mm -hmm. you know how companies, you, you, you talk, right? Yeah. You talk amongst yeah. each other. But it doesn't sound like you guys had the freedom to do that because you might have somebody internally who's going to go run off to, you know, some boss and... And you know, kill yeah. the coffee talk, right? It's, oh, yeah. It's, yeah. That's that's communism. That's authoritarianism. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not good. But the other thing is, you know, just uh, to your comment, Logan, the 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 uh, big wigs in the company at PNNL or other companies can just keep their mouth shut and do their job. You can just put your head down. You don't have to suck up to the government mm -hmm. to make sure you maintain those contracts, right? I mean, you could just they could have just put their head down, right? Hey, we're we're part of the Hanford thing we're very important let's just stay quiet put our heads down do our job get through this we don't need to promote this narrative is my point right. so so i think building on what you said i don't think it's so much that they're just trying to save the contracts i think that yeah maybe it helps them right now they're you know but the reality is they would have been just fine if they would have just shut up and done their job the, uh, yeah there there is i mean Everything they do, every every change they make, they they talk about the impact it might potentially have on DOE contracts, right? So if if they're so afraid of of losing DOE contract DOE money, then that might shade some of their actions. But I mean, we were we were sent an email from the director. The entire staff was sent an email from the director saying he was already going to make it mandatory before there was even a, a federal mandate mm -hmm. that he was already going to do it. It was already his plans. But now that he has backing from the from the administration, that we're just that he and the team have decided to make it mandatory for everyone. And now there was no vote. There was no change in our job requirements. There was no change in our union agreement. Nothing at all. It was just here's this testing begins this day. The drop dead date is this day, and you better get a shot. Yeah. Well, you guys should be the biggest PNNL cheerleaders from now on because. Uh, they better be getting some big checks for the government so they can afford to pay for the lawsuit that's coming. <laughs> I hope you guys do well with that. You, you this personal question here, but you chose not to take the jab, I assume, knowing that it was going to cost you your job. Uh, you know, and especially in your circumstances with this company. Uh, you know, but why? Uh, why do you think that they're doing this? And why? Maybe each of you can answer this in, in different ways, but. What was your personal methodology on just saying, oh, I'm, I'm not going to go down this path? So um, we were actually both technically fired for uh, insubordination because we refused to test. So we both put in exemptions, and in our exemptions, we requested that, that said we would provide an antibody test results, and that they, our request was that they would accept antibodies as equal to vac vaccinated, yeah. which seems reasonable yeah, and, and, and it's very interesting just let me let me jump in here for just a second for about 140 dollars we can go get an antibody test that shows whether you have the natural immunity 
and you're good, yeah. right, from, mm -hmm. from that point forward. And, and not only can you do that, what's very interesting about it is, is that the $140 part, you can go get a jab for free, the government will subsidize that, mm -hmm. which is an indication of which direction they want you to go. Yeah. But you have to pay the $140 for an actual test to show that you have antibodies. They won't pay for that. But insurance is having a hard time. Not all insurances cover it too, so it, a lot of it's out of your pocket. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. But, but yeah, go ahead. But, um, and so both of our stipulations on that were, we'll provide you antibody tests. And and I, I told them flat out, I said, look, if I don't have the antibodies, I'll walk away, I'll quit. You're making these rules, I don't agree with them. But if I can't prove that I have antibodies, then I'll quit. Yeah. And they flat out said, no, we're not going to accept antibody testing. Because the CDC doesn't say we should accept antibody testing. But we're for the science, darn well, it. But we're science, yeah. And, yeah. and that's what, that was, it was really ironic because actually in my uh, termination interview, I asked, I said, uh, well, what's the point of a vaccine? Go well, produce antibodies. I said, and I want to show you that I have antibodies. I've had COVID. I tested positive for COVID with a little self test kit. Um, I want to show you I have antibodies. Well, yeah, but we're, we're just not going down that road. Which it, it really, PNNL, and, and this is my opinion, but PNNL has a, a really, they like to look one way, but the reality is very, very different. And, and that is their core values, the, their, um, score principles their score principles um all of those things we brought up in in the conversation well your core principle is a questioning attitude yeah i'm asking i'm trying to ask a question can, can, can we look at this avenue no nope. hey those those are just a list yeah that's just yeah, a yeah. list yeah. look good on the wall more like, well, like that's more like guidelines yeah, yeah. And, that, that's, yeah. and that's literally what it was. push comes to shove yeah. you think yeah. we're really going to follow those yeah come yeah. on it's like it's like, like, it's like yeah. going to the doctor and he says, "Cut down on your salt." You really think you're gonna? We, you, you know, you go out for dinner. Like you need a little salt. Right? You walk out yeah. of the office eating potato chips, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, but oh my you know, and so <laughs> it was just, it was really disappointing because both both of us have, um, I'm gonna steal all your thunder, but okay. both of us have received multiple awards for going above and beyond. Um, we've both been in, in leadership type positions there, um, and. Uh, you know, I've actually talked with upper management about how how to get discretionary effort um, and, and things like that, um, and it's just it didn't matter. In the end, it didn't yeah. matter. We were a problem because we were standing up, and it was it was funny yeah. because in my firing situation, they were mad. They were mad, and I said, "Well, no, I'm not going to test." They they didn't know what to do with that wow. because. Everybody has, and, and I firmly believe people and their own have their own choices. That's their freedom to do. Yeah. But for me, I I was not going to support a lie that I know is a lie. Right. And if I can't sacrifice when it's not my life or my children's life, but it's some subscriptions and changing the way we live, yeah. then why would I stand up later? Yeah. So that and that, that was my my yeah. reasoning for it. Yeah, yeah, very important. Um, he, he was very professional through the whole process because he was the first one. I mean, he, he was fired uh, two weeks before I was. Uh, he was the first one fired, actually terminated for, for this reason. Uh, and so he, since it was uncommon ground, he was very professional and, and he went through all the, the, the steps and he, he jumped through all their hoops. He took two weeks off unpaid because he didn't want to be in violation of their testing protocols. Uh, so he was at home because they didn't have the answer for him. It took him probably three weeks going through the process from start to finish. Um, <clears throat> I'm a Marine, and so uh, I get a little, Ooh, <laughs> uh, right, I get a little, I get a little uh, hot under the collar sometimes, and when my best friend got fired, uh, I used the same exact reasoning, uh, but I was still professional, but I, I, um, I knew what the, end, what the end result was. So that mine was a little faster. My termination yeah. was a little faster. My, my <laughs> firing, at this point, they were skeet shooting. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, my, my, oh. my, my termination video was five minutes and 44 seconds uh, from hello to goodbye. Wow. Uh, his was about uh, nine minutes after all edited out. So probably a 20 minute. So yeah, it was significantly faster. Um, but my main reason for opposing both the vaccination um, is because 
scientifically, it makes no sense. Like, I can't meet them. I can't meet a big organization on religious issues, even though I submitted a religious exemption. I can't meet them on patriotic issues because you're choosing to be unpatriotic in, in enforcing this. Yeah. So I'm meeting you in your playing field, which scientifically, antibodies should count. Yeah. If I could prove that, I should have the exact same privileges because they're using testing as a strong-handed coercion tactic. If you have the vaccine, you're fine. Nothing at all. I mean, you wear a mask, but you're fine. There's no testing, yeah. nothing whatsoever. If you don't have the vaccine, you test twice a week. They only accept brain tickling tests. Um, and and that was until the, the, the vaccine due date, which was November 15th. And then even then, even if you played by all the rules and you jumped through all the hoops, you'd still get fired. Mm. Um, and so I, I stood against the, the testing because simply it's wrong. Yeah. It, it's not the way you treat your people and it's not founded in science. And so it, it's bullying, you yeah. know, and you as a company are endorsing that. I can't stand by that. Yeah. You know, and so that was kind of where I made my stand and, and uh, they didn't appreciate that. So, yeah, uh, yeah it, was, it was an interesting experience. That's for sure. Yeah. A couple of uh, electrician, hardworking guys taking on the so-called scientists who should know better, right? Yeah. Very interesting. I got a I got a story I'll wrap up with uh, later uh, that'll kind of bring that to point. So, how many people have resigned or been fired from PNL that you know of? It just really started kicking off last week. Mm -hmm. um, most people were participating in the testing until the the deadline. Um, I know of three or four that have been let go. Um, I know of quite a few that have chosen retirement, mm -hmm. um, but they don't, so they have a whiteboard, a digital whiteboard at PNNL, and they pretty much said, you can't talk about any of this on there. Yeah. So it's hard to really know, mm -hmm. um, and we're not there anymore. So oh, interesting. they actually banned us both from campus. Wow. Yeah. You guys are really dangerous. Well, and we can never apply again. We can never. I mean. Shame, but <laughs> oh, yeah. we, we can never apply yeah. to work ever again. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's all right. You just got to go back in a higher level position, like right. running the place. Yeah, right. well, so, we co-own it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was reported this week that nearly 300 PNNL workers from the Hanford site have filed a lawsuit in federal court claiming that Hanford site will not have enough workers, including Hanford guards, to do the minimum work needed to keep the site safe and secure. Uh, defendants named in the lawsuit include the illegitimate President Biden, DOE, Hanford manager Brian Vance, and leadership of Hanford and PNML contractors. Uh, according to an article in the Tri-City Herald, a bastion for conservatism, <laughs> uh, the lawsuit filed Tuesday asked the U.S. Judge uh, Tom Rice uh, block workers to block workers from being fired due to the requirements that uh, they are fully vaccinated or receive a re religious or medical exem exemption. If the case proceeds to trial, rather than a judge making an immediate ruling, uh, it wants damages paid, including job including for job loss. It also wants judge to declare vaccine mandates unconstitutional and the infringement on employees' free exercise of religion. The lawsuit argues that people who have had the virus have natural immunity, which we talked about, and should not be required to be vaccinated. Uh, the lawsuit claims that the vaccine mandate violates 17 clauses in the Constitution, including equal protection, uh, violation of the American uh, Americans with Disabilities Act, uh, wrongful termination, breach of contract, and more. So what do you think there, or what are your thoughts on this lawsuit? Have you heard about it? And what do you think their chances are just as a non-attorney judge type? Go ahead, bud. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have, we have actually been involved a little bit with it. Um, I don't think either of us are on the lawsuit. Um, and that's, that's mainly just because we've been so focused on trying to get our feet under us and, and get our company off the ground. So, um, and, uh, that lawsuit was mainly directed at um, the mandate and not um, for those who refused testing okay. as much. Um, so that one was pretty specific. Um, we did go to a rally for it, and uh, there were quite a few people there. Now, as far as their chances go, I don't know. Depends on the judge, I guess. Yeah. 
we're a pretty liberal state. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. But hopefully, from a judicial standpoint. Yeah. yeah. But you know, the the fourth district yes. where we're at is one of the most conservative in mm -hmm. the country. Right. And Eastern Washington, in general, leans quite conservative, which is great. And even a good portion of of Western Washington is is conservative outside of, you know, the the majority of King and Pierce yeah, County. Spots, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, so summarize the constitutional objections to the vaccine. Uh, some of the high points that I noticed were uh, the free exercise clause in the First Amendment to the Constitution. The free exercise clause protects citizens' rights to pr pr practice their religion as they please, so long as the practice does not run afoul with public morals and compelling government interest. Mm -hmm. Compelling government interest is kind of interesting. Uh, Equal, word. Yeah. <laughs> the Equal Protection Clause in the Constitution, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall uh, abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Who would have thought that we would be all looking so closely at our Constitution in 2021? Isn't it interesting? Uh, Title VII is a provision, so this is the Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, uh, which pro prohibits discrimination in uh, virtually every employment circumstances on the basis of race, color, religion, gender, pregnancy, or national origin. Uh, in general, Title VII applies to employers with 15 or more employees, but it's interesting they talk about religion and pregnancy are the two that stick out in there for me because Religion is incredibly broad and obviously the one that is most talked about in this circumstance. But pregnancy is interesting because it's a medical condition. Right. You know, and so it's clearly articulated that, it, you know, we're covered under our religious beliefs, but we're also covered under our medical choice, mm -hmm. you know, beliefs. Uh, and then the American with Disabilities Acts, Acts uh, Title I, uh, requires employers with 15 or more employees to provide qualified individuals with disabilities are an equal opportunity to benefit. Basically, it means if you have a disability, the employers can't generally ask many questions about that mm -hmm. uh, disability, and they're also required to make certain accommodations to, to at least attempt to make it possible for those people to work. Right. And, and uh, you know, so there's obviously some limitations. In general, I would say I'm astounded at how much, uh, how much, liability companies are taking on their shoulders, you know, as a result of uh, of these mandates. And then there's also the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which I won't go into, but it's very interesting uh, in, in the same regards. And bottom line is we have natural rights under God. Those are our God-given rights that we as human beings, and especially as Americans, I think this is an area where America has not done well, where Americans have not done well. We've mm -hmm. done We've done good attempting to evangelize the world with the gospel, but we haven't done very good attempting to teach the rest of the world about their natural rights, and I think we should. Right. Because yeah. we could do a really good job of having of seeing grassroots efforts come up in these communist-run countries where the people of that country stand up as a result of an understanding of their natural rights, and they overthrow their mm -hmm. government and, you know, get on a path to something healthier and better. But we also have our constitutional rights, mm -hmm. right. you know, which protect us. So which you guys are exercising. So now that you're not at PNNL, you've kind of moved on, the dust is settled, I see you guys have matching sweatshirts, what are you going to do? Tell me all about it. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> so um, uh, we actually, uh, on your point, first of all, um, I, I really like what you said because we spent a lot of time talking about it, and, and we came to the same conclusion that there are actually – two arguments, mm -hmm. one as Christians, because mm -hmm. we're both Christians, mm -hmm. one as Christians, and then one as patriots. Right. Yeah. And they they mix and they intertwine somewhat, but you really can boil it down to, it's wrong here, and yeah. it's wrong here. Yeah. And, yeah. and once you kind of come to that conclusion in your mind, then the stance becomes really clear. Mm -hmm. But um, so we actually decided to start a digital media company Cool. Um, uh, we named it Fidelis Digital Media, Media which Fidelis is Latin for faithful, cool. um, because we we truly believe this that God called us to take the stand where we took it for us, mm -hmm. and um, just like Peter stepping out of the boat, 
this is our stepping out of the boat yeah. wow. for us. Um, and it's scary. Yeah. It's a little spooky. <laughs> yeah. a, lot, a lot of unknowns. Yeah. A lot of unknowns. Maybe you guys can do a video on uh, your your uh, exit and the anti-mandate. That's in the works. <laughs> that actually like is in the that. works. Yeah. We're, we're doing a little bit of a series there. Um, it's, you know, it's finding time between projects and, and things like that. Yeah. But we are working on that. Um, yeah, and, and like Logan said, it is it is very strange how um, <laughs> it it is two points. It, it it is the patriotic and it is the Christian thing, um, but yeah, it, it, it's interesting because uh, to me the word that comes to mind is integrity. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and, and years ago I remember thinking about trying to define what integrity was. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you know if you've seen someone with integrity? Mm -hmm. Or how do you know if you have integrity, right. mm -hmm. you know? And the thing that I remember thinking about was, it's somebody who doesn't have to think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just automatic. The right thing comes out, you know? And when you likely thought about this whole situation, by the time we got to where we were at with the mandates, most of us with sort of common sense had already decided whether or not we were going to take this right. yeah. jab, right? Mm -hmm. So, you got you know, you guys probably backed into the idea that, yeah, I made that decision because I have integrity, not because, you know, I, you know, because you had to think a lot about it, right? Right, right. It, it, was, it was definitely, we knew where we stood mm -hmm. from the beginning. Yeah. But there was some... Because not everybody we know or friends with or even family agree. Yeah. yeah. And so trying to work out the, the logic from the instinct and the principle from the kind of ethereal idea of it, like why are we doing this, um, that, that took a lot of thinking. Because yeah. for uh, our Christian brothers and sisters, it's one argument. Yeah. And then for those that don't have the same faith it's but still love their country and, and then it's the patriotic argument mm -hmm. right and and they don't necessarily they're not necessarily compatible mm -hmm. um and i've had christian people say well you know that's you know that's patriotic but i don't see the the religious aspect of it and then you know it you can't really bring christian argument to somebody who doesn't right hold yeah. those same values yeah. so so and and uh it, talking about that a little bit, um, we, if you focus on the reality of it all, right, and that it is not a just a little test, because that's what it, that's what they, everyone says. It's like even my own family. It's just a test, right? If you if you just don't get the vax, you submit your exemption, and they approved my exemption. Mm -hmm. They approved me. Uh, they said as long as you submit to testing, you'll be fine. Um, but the problem is we both see it for what it is, and it is part of a bigger lie. It is part of the problem, just like with masks. I mean, it, it's, it's something that is being perpetuated because that is what someone is using to drive control, right? And we don't feel that we should have to get vaccinated because we have natural immunity. We don't feel that we should have to test because we're fine. We're, we're, we're adults. We're, you know, we're Americans that yeah. can take care of ourselves. And... It's not just that. It is all part of the problem. And if they can get you to give in just a little bit, just a little bit here, a little bit there, at some point you're going to find yourself compromised. And it all supports the lie. And we sat down, uh, when because we were actually, he was called, and they were talking about, well, what would you say if we changed the testing, if it was just like once a week, or if it, you could go wherever you want and didn't have to be the brain ticklers. And we were honestly, for probably 30 minutes, well, then it wouldn't be because we were seeing it as just the test, right? right? We were seeing it as just a tiny little little mm -hmm. piece of the puzzle, and then we sat and we prayed, and we, you know, our prayer was that that God make it to where we could continue to work there without compromising. Yeah. And we drew uh, an unnecessary vaccine or uh, the strong-handed coercive tests. That's the line. Yeah. So if you would accept antibodies and we could provide those to you, and we wouldn't have to test. We wouldn't have to get a vaccine. We would still be working there. If we today. don't have to support the lie. Yeah, yeah. Then then we'll stay. But, and it was that day. It was the, the that day he got a call saying we need to talk to you tomorrow because you're being fired. Um, 
And then the day I was going to go to my interview process, I got a call saying, hey, just so you know, they changed it again. You can just one a week. You can get it. And, and But at that point, they'd already fired my friend. I'm like, no. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. You're not getting out of it that easy. Um, <laughs> I'm not working twice as hard. Just exactly. Fired yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, no, we, uh, we drew the line. And uh, it has been discouraging a little bit seeing people that were in the same camp slowly begin to convince themselves that it is just a test. Yeah. It is just a shot. Well, now it's boosters. Well, now it's other things. Yeah. And, well, and, and now they got you. Yeah, it's interesting because what you guys are pointing at, and you both basically said this without saying it, is this, it's this interesting idea of the understanding of what's behind your decisions. Mm -hmm. okay. And the truth is what's behind your decisions is your information, yeah. not public. But when you look at the digital world that we're in, they're just continuing to get more and more invasive where they want to know everything about us to the mm -hmm. point where like, what color of underwear are you wearing mm -hmm. today? Right. You know, it's, it's crazy. And so what's behind, you know, you, you look at like a train, you know, people understand engineering and mechanics. They know that, oh, well, that's a steam powered train. Oh, well, the steam comes from a coal fired furnace that's behind it that heats up the water that turns it to steam that drives that, you know, right. or it's a, or it's a diesel engine that's taken, you know, there's something behind it that's mm -hmm. driving it down the track, yeah. right? Well, just like all of us, like we have this cool thing called the gospel that's driving us down the track of life. But then there's also other things like the Constitution, like the things mm -hmm. that the history of our country, the, you know, the foundation of how we were brought up, what our yeah. family belief systems were. All of that is personal and not yeah. something that we should be forced to have to like answer just in order to get into a mini mart to, to right. buy a soda or <laughs> to get into yeah. a concert or to get a driver's license right. or to do whatever, to right? To keep your job. To keep your job, yeah. Yeah, yeah, to be able to feed your family. Those are personal reasons that drive you. My point is, you know, when you see a train, you don't ask the conductor what's driving him. You just get out of the way. Like that right. train's coming through and, and it's, on, it's, on a, it's got a path and it's on a right of way. And, and I think that is a good way of highlighting these are our choices. They, these are not something we should have to justify. If we believe strongly in a, a certain thing, that's our prerogative. That's our freedom. Yeah. That's yeah. our choice to do that as Americans, right? Yeah. And and as God's children. Yeah. And and it's crazy that that we have to, you know, that we have to go through this process of. I mean, I, I applaud you guys for the thought process, and for the methodology of you know, drawing a line in the sand, you know, you have more integrity and backbone than Obama. He drew lots of lines in the sand. He kept, <laughs> he kept moving, them, you know. Uh, but, you know, you did that. You trusted God and you, you know, and now uh, you're going to continue forward, continuing to trust God. Like, all right, we trust you before we trust all this. So <laughs> That's it. what's exactly. next? Yep. You know, so, so along those lines, what is your website for your new gig? Uh, so it is fidelisdm.com. Okay. F I D E L I S D M dot D M. Yep. What's D O oh, Digital Media? Digital Media, yeah. And then uh, what types of work do you do? So digital media is not just photography and video. Are you also doing ads so, online and different things yeah, like that? Yeah. So uh, we also do website creation, management, uh, and then we're offering um, social media integration services, promotions, marketing, things like that. So uh, it's it's kind of a it's an envelope. Especially, you know, we're hoping to like get customers and then provide this stuff for them. Um, but and we're also both FAA uh, drone yes oh, pilots. Cool. drone pilots. Oh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yes, so we, that's actually how the business started. Yep. <laughs> right before we got fired, we we're like, oh, well, I guess we know where this is going, and we started talking about drones. And literally that night, we were like, okay. Let's start a drone business. Let's see where it goes. Yeah, that's good. And that's how, that's how we yeah. got started. Good for you. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. Well, uh, be praying for your guys' business. And, Thank, you. Uh, Thank you. I'm very proud of the stand that you're taking and, and the, the, you know, your desire and willingness to, you know, trust God over, you know, this world. That's, that's not something that I think is... I think it's common. I think it's just not something that we see promoted a lot. Right, right. And so I'm, I'm happy to see you guys do that. And, and I very much appreciate you spending some time with me here and making your story public. And I hope that it encourages other people to, you know, to really own their personal liberty and, and uh, just as you have done and trust God with the rest. You know, I, yeah. I just did a show last week where I was talking about, you know, the story of my life seems to be do all I can and trust God for the rest. Like, mm -hmm. I go into stuff half the time knowing I can 
maybe do 80%. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. And, I, and yeah. I'm probably yeah. way too over optimistic. Right. Now, right? Exactly. And so yeah. I do all I can. Yep. And somehow, when it's God's will, it just somehow the rest finishes. A the lot of times open. it's God's yeah. people coming in and, you know, finishing it. But with that, it was a hearty thank you for coming on. But I want to. I'm going to point to our viewers and I want to tell just a quick story about choice because I think it aligns with kind of what we've what we've discussed at, you know here. So for everybody on, thanks huge thanks to Trevor and Logan and go to fidelisdm.com. fidelisdm.com and uh, hire these guys for your business, for your wedding, for your event, for what else, you know, your personal thing. <laughs> Whatever. We're still figuring it out. Want, yeah, we're, want, <laughs> we're here work, for work you. Is yeah. Work is yeah. work. You want to have a uh, drone fly over you while you're coming out of the grocery store and get some cool shots of you pushing that buggy out of the grocery store, <laughs> then these guys can make it happen. So I want to tell you a quick story about this. Now, I was diagnosed with terminal cancer uh, twenty, almost 23 years ago, 22 plus years ago. And uh, I was in the doctor's office with uh, with the doctors and they were giving us this, you know, we, we'd actually already gotten the diagnosis and we had thought about it and, and they'd given us some options. They, they gave us like four or five options for treatments. One, one of them was monitoring and then there was like chemotherapy radiation, there was interferon and, you know, and one other one. And I chose to do monitoring. So basically I was refusing all medical treatment. They told me that I had a 5% chance to live and if I did the medical treatment, that I could improve that my odds by up to 15%. And none of that was enough for me. I trusted God, and I was going to see it through. And uh, I changed my diet, my lifestyle. I lost a bunch of weight. I started getting healthy. I started eating the things that gave my natural immune system strength. And here I am 22 years later, and I don't worry about cancer anymore. My point with that was when I was in that office, I literally had... Uh, doctors yelling at me to the point where my mom was crying and it was this it was already a very emotional thing uh, because I wasn't going to submit to their modalities and you know that is my choice just as much as this situation right now is your choice it's our choice to do what we want to do and so I just want to encourage you that you know those doctors were wrong back then it wasn't that their treatment or their options weren't something that is perfectly viable for anybody to choose to do and to follow that. But they were wrong because they were trying to direct how I wanted to choose, how I wanted to proceed. It's my body given to me by God, and he's told me that it's my responsibility to take care of my temple, not somebody else's. And so I took on that responsibility actively, and I made positive changes in my diet and my lifestyle so that I could still live. And, and that was my choice. So. Thanks again to Trevor and Logan for coming on. Just remember, like the, like the show, share the show, hit the little bell icon, do all the stuff that you got to do to make this thing go and float. And uh, remember that you are the plan. And if Sessler says it, you can believe it. So thank you and have a good night. American values do not align with leftists because they hate America. We must engage by giving our dollars and our talents to defend our great American values. Visit jaredsessler.com to donate and get involved. Say yes to America.